Well, hello, and welcome to today's episode of Nico's Roadshow, which is definitely not a show I just made up to stay relevant and fill space on my channel for the YouTube algorithms. But today's show is hosted by, obviously, me, with today's guest, the HKVP70Z, the safest pistol to have ever graced the U.S. civilian market. Well, alrighty, after my beautiful serenading, let's go ahead and get into this thing. So, as aforementioned, what we have here is the HKVP70Z in the box. What these videos are going to be is like a quick little five minute rundown of me opening the box, taking a look at it, giving you my impressions, and then going and shooting it, hopefully. And, uh,. We'll provide some good filler for my channel, you know, without being too dull and boring. So, HK VP70Z, we got the box here, just cheapy old cardboard. Um, used to belong to Eugene Clark, apparently. Got some neat little metal bobs and bits here on the side that hold it together. I like that green color, very nice. Got the uh, original manual here. How neat is that? No one cares. And, of course, the factory target so they can let you know that it shoots and let you know that the guy that shot it can't shoot. Not sure how far away they are, but uh, I would have hoped in a factory setting you could put a little better grouping than that. But then again, it was 1979 and everyone knows boomers can't shoot. So, fold that up, set her out of the way. Tissue paper, neato. Mag, already loaded with the 18 rounds, full capacity that I'm going to use to shoot this thing and give it my quick little rundown on how I feel about it. Something I really do like about this is it's double feed, right? Because, I mean, it's originally machine pistol, but even in the semi-auto only, it's so nice being able to just click rounds in right from the top. So pleasant. The gun itself, which, as you'll notice, is absolutely gorgeous with all its nice round curves. Nothing sharp with the exception of where it needs to be. Um, and yeah, it's pretty nice. Although one thing I will say about it that I'm really not a fan of is the sights, man. Those sights are freaking weird. And it's not necessarily that they're bad. They work and they're good. But when you're so used to everything else just being notch, post, it gets kind of funky when you got notch, notch. Notch there, notch there. I think it's kind of funky to line up. I mean, a little practice, it's not too bad, but takes a second to get used to and by the time you get used to this you suck with everything else or at least i do but i kind of suck with everything anyways mag in it you'll be surprised here this is actually the safety which when i first started looking at this thing i had a weird opinion about it and that was that this safety is wonderful and i was like man this is fantastic why don't more handguns have that? You know, you pull it out quick, ready to go. And then I started thinking about it, and I was like, such a great idea. Why wouldn't everything happen? And then I realized, that's probably because most every other handgun has a mag release right there, and I was just kind of dumb. Whereas this one is a heel release, and uh, not exactly the most efficient. But, uh, you know, it works. And for a carry gun, you know, if you're slipping this down in your old waistband, I think that's just fine. Now, let's go ahead and shoot it. And here we are out on the range with the beautiful VP70Z. And I would like to apologize ahead of time for the goofy helmet here. I don't have my mask on. That's because I, uh, I lost my normal earplugs and this was the only helmet I could find laying around that had some earplugs built into it. So, that being said, the title of this video mentions the safest handgun in the world. And let me show you why that is, right? So we've got loaded mag here. Let's insert that. Put around in the chamber, which I'll show you. There is indeed around in the chamber. Put the gun on fire. It is on fire. You can see the red. And now that it's on fire, you'll notice that it's not going off. There's no grip safety. It's not a mag safety mag's in. And that would be because this gun has what is possibly 
the heaviest trigger known to man, somewhere in the realm of 300 to 400 pounds, squeezing, 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 nothing until eventually, blast. It's wild, isn't it? On fire, just, and that's obviously, that's not a double action than single action, that is double action only, and it is atrocious. But, I mean, hey, I guess, uh, I don't know too many toddlers with gorilla grips I could set this thing off. So, one could be said that this is the safest handgun in the world. But now, let's get back to uh, dumping a mag out of it and see what I think. It feels so weird just having to jerk the absolute shit. <laughs> out of that trigger to shoot the gun goes against everything i've ever been taught and thought but now let's take this thing to the whiteboard and give it a score well all righty now that we've got the shooting out of the way i shall introduce you guys to my scoring system well what my scoring system is is it's five categories that are totally arbitrary and based off of my opinions and my opinions only and uh it'll give me a basis of rating all the guns and seeing what comes over each other, under, etc. Now, for number one, we've got extras. And what I'm calling extras is what the gun comes with. So, the gun came with a meh box. Cardboard, nothing to be impressed with, but hey, it does the job. You buy the gun, it comes in a box. Two, comes with two mags, which is not too shabby. I mean, it's good enough to get you started and going. Um, Three, got the owner's manual and all that jazz. Um, nothing special. So, five out of ten. Middle of the road. Could come with more. Be nicer. But uh, seeing as I haven't made the guns, God knows how long. Don't get your hopes up. Number two, reliability. So, I've had this gun for a while and I've shot it a good bit. I wouldn't say a ton. I've ran maybe a thousand rounds through it, which for the meme gun it kind of is. I would say it's decent. Um, and out of that, I would say maybe had two jams total. Maybe the ammo's fault. I don't know. But we'll give it a 9 out of 10 because, hey, it's not perfect. Number three, ergonomics. Now, I will say, ergonomics is going to be kind of sort of, you know, individual specific, which for me as an individual with massive bare mitts for hands, I mean, I'm a larger guy. I'm six foot seven, 275 pounds. Fits me well. Fits me very well, actually, and extremely comfortable. Uh, the grips aren't too intense, but they're also not too slick. I like it. So, 7 out of 10. Now, performance. And what I mean by performance is how relevant is the gun? Like, how viable is it in today's gun market? Is it good for everyday carry, combat, etc.? Eh, probably not, but it's decent. You know, it holds 18 rounds. Um, it's fairly accurate. Sights are kind of wonky. The only thing is, if you get used to those sights, you know, every other sight's going to be different. It'll take a minute to readjust. Um, so, with that being said, 5 out of 10. It's good. It's not bad, but it's not perfect. Now, the most important score that will make or break any gun is the Nico score. And that is based off of purely my speculation and my speculation alone. And I think the gun's fucking neat. It's got a neato burrito safety. Um, shoots neat. Trigger's quirky. I kind of like it, honestly. The heel mag release, I know a lot of other guns have it, but I like it. I like weird stuff. It's just me. Now, you take those, average them out, gun comes in with 6.8 out of 10. So, it is, uh, for all intents and purposes, a pretty decent gun. And for those of you curious, you can find them on the secondary market right now with an average price of 600 to 800 bucks. So, if you see anyone price them any higher, just know that they're buttheads and they're scalpers and don't buy from them because you can find them cheaper all day long. So I think that concludes this. I approve of this gun.